Why, hello. It's the 3rd of November today, which means it's my birthday. I'm just gonna tell you, it's my birthday! <laughs> I am in my, I like to think of this as my Georgian roll neck jumper. I think it's the kind of thing an Irishman in a sleepy fishing town might wear. So yes, I love it. I am 25, which means I'm now in a new young adult category. So I feel I've transcended out of the poverty of youth somewhat now, even though I am still poor, but surely it's got to be uphill financially now. Yeah, my student loan came in in the last few days. So these are some books that I've been buying here and there since I did my last book haul in August. I'm just going to run through them now. Some of the books I bought in the run-up for Victober because I was hoping to do that, but then in October I just didn't get round to doing that. But I'm going to run through the books, you know, fairly quickly because there's a lot. First of all, I have my birthday cake. I have my tea in my Scorpio mug because I am a true Scorpio along with Anna Wintour, the editor of Vogue, Chris Jenner, the matriarch of the Kardashian family. See my track queen, let her hit the bando. We be counting up, watch how far them bands go. We just set it go, talking about the Lambos. I fit the six and five. Sylvia Plath, Dylan Thomas, Zadie Smith. I always think it's fun to see what other people I admire, what their star signs are like, and whether I have um, similarities with them. Um, not just famous people, like even like friends or people I know, whether I see similarities between myself and them, if they're the same star sign as me. Um, I mean, obviously it's just star signs, so it's just a bit of fun, because Kendall Jenner, the model, She's got exactly the same birthday as me, like same year, same date. And I don't see myself as having much in common with her just because she's boring as beige paint. But then again, with the whole star sign thing, it really depends what time of the day you were born. So I'm sure maybe because me and Kendall must have been born at different times of the day, that must be why we're not alike at all. They just know what is what, but they don't know what is what. They just strut. What Yo. the fuck? Don't be trying to double back, I already despise you yeah. All that fake love you've shown couldn't even disguise you Yo, yo When, when, Nikki getting tan Mirror, mirror, who's the fairest bitch in all the land? <laughs> swish, swish, <laughs> Some people actually find their birthday a depressing day and I'm always scared of that I'll become like that. So I try to not make a massive deal out of my birthday because I've not had a real birthday party since I was probably about 12. So I always like to get myself treats for my birthday, like actual birthday cake. I savour the just the taste and texture of these shop-bought birthday cakes. I love getting these and I can freeze them. So it's like I get to celebrate my birthday for like an entire month. <laughs> One of the things I bought myself is, check this out, a dance mat for my PS2. I feel like that will be a fun way of doing exercise inside without feeling like I'm doing exercise. So um, I'll see how I get on with that. I used to play on my dance mat as a kid a lot, so I feel like it will be fun to do stuff like that. How do you feel about your birthdays? Do you find it like it's like a weird day because you're not a kid anymore so no one makes that big a deal out of your birthday? I always like to make myself feel special um, on my birthday. Each year I try and outdo myself. Also with these birthday cakes, I get like, you know, a kid with these ribbons that come round it. It feels lovely, but really it's not really good for anything at all, so I never know what to do with them, but I still like getting them just the same. 
let's get into some of the books I bought. You could just think it is somber, can see? I want your attention, everything. First of all, I have this Madonna biography by J. Randy Taraborelli. I am a big Madonna fan. My mum and I attended her Madam X tour in London and I loved it. The Shadow King by Marza Mangisti. I'm reading this for the book prize at the moment. Thomas Hardy, The Woodlanders. Poetic Justice by Amanda Cross. Apparently it's about student riots. William Thackeray, Vanity Fair. I did actually have an edition of this before, but I saw this in a charity shop and I was like, the font is so big for this little book. So I feel like that will be really nice to read because the edition I had before was a really cheap mass market one, but the font was really small. Whereas this one, I mean, it's pretty cheap, but the font is big. So I indulged myself. The Vanishing Act of Esme Lennox. This is by Maggie O'Farrell. I wanted to check out some more of her because everyone bangs on about Hamnet, but I'd rather read a bit of her earlier stuff to get into her. The Blind Assassin by Margaret Atwood. The Night Watch by Sarah Waters. Ian Banks, Canal Dreams, The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. I really, really love the cover of this. Aiding and Abetting by Muriel Spark. This is one of the Polygon editions that came out for Muriel Spark's Centurion. So I really, really want to get on to reading this because I want to continue my favourite author's series and do Muriel Spark next. The Sense of an Ending by Julian Barnes. Did this win the Booker? Yeah, this won the Booker Prize, apparently. When I saw this, I was like, this is actually a really beautiful edition. The Gap of Time by Jeanette Winterson. I think this one is a retelling of the Winter's Tale. Dostoevsky Notes from Underground and the Double. I do have The Brothers Karamazov to read by him. Uh, but I am a bit intimidated to pick that up because I really want to enjoy it. But I feel like if I really love Dostoevsky, this might be a book that I would enjoy getting into. The Forward Book of Poetry for 2021. This really cute edition of Middlemarch. You belong to me. And this really lovely edition of The Professor by Charlotte Bronte. Gone with the Wind. It has a really kind of retro classic feel. And the font actually looks a decent size in this as well. An X Library edition of Winter Trees by Sylvia Plath. I've read collections of Sylvia Plath stuff, except for Winter Trees, so I'm really, really excited for this one. The Liar's Dictionary by Elay Williams. I talked about this one in my video when I was predicting what was going to be on the Booker Prize for this year. Revolutionary Road by Richard Yates. Some more Julian Barnes. This one's called Arthur and George. And this I got from a charity shop in Stockport, actually. The Writers and Artists Yearbook of 2018. £3. It's only two years old, so most of the links and advice, I'm sure, would still be really, really useful for me. Cake break. Mm. I, I found this really nice edition of Possession. An impressive title. Henry James, The Golden Bowl. I've only read The Turn of the Screw by Henry James, so I really want to read more of him. I feel like he's a writer I will really come to admire. 
Disgrace by J.M. Coetzee. Robert Graves, Goodbye to All That. I think this is a memoir. I haven't really read much Robert Graves, but he is meant to be a really well-renowned poet. So if I enjoy this, I might pick up some of his poetry. After I hated on Anne Tyler's redhead at the side of the road, when I was in a charity shop, I saw some of her earlier books. So I wanted to pick some of those up because if I enjoy those, I might want to pick up Redhead at the side of the road. I picked up Vinegar Girl, A Patchwork Planet, that's it. And then Tesco had a two for eight pound offer. So I got Girl by Edna O'Brien and Girl Woman Other by Benedine Everisto. Some more Maggie O'Farrell. The Hand That First Held Mine. This looks like a misery memoir kind of book, but it, it won the Costa Book Award, so I'm expecting good things from this. Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. Elmet by Fiona Mosley. This is a lovely edition as well, which is the main reason I bought it. Frenchman's Creek by Daphne du Maurier. A Death in the Family. This is the first in the autofiction series that Nagsgaard has written. This is all about him writing about being a father and a man. But apparently this one is about him growing up, possibly. But yeah, this is like a classic of autofiction nowadays, pretty much. You know how I Love Dick by Chris Kreis is the classic for like a women's autofiction novel i think this is like the equivalent of that but a man that lonesome valley by melissa lee horton so melissa lee horton's best known as a poet but when i was looking into her catalogue this novel that she wrote that was published by a really small press gone under the radar it's not very long her poetry is really emotionally hard-hitting so I'm expecting that this novel is going to be an emotional tour de force. Boy Part by Eliza Clark. I've heard a lot of good things about this. I also had this alongside The Liar's Dictionary for my predictions for what would make the Booker 2020 long list. And this missed out on that. I'm still intrigued to read it. The Taming of the Shrew by Shakespeare. Back at home at my parents' house, I do have a big collected works of Shakespeare, but it's like a really old one with tiny font. And I really, really want to have every single Shakespeare play, but in a, a little edition like this, because there's always little bits of essays and glossaries and stuff that I feel like when I read his plays, I want to feel like I'm reading that specific play, not like I'm reading all of him. So yeah, I'm on my way to collecting all of his plays. Therapy by David Lodge. I do have a soft spot for these old Penguin classics. A successful sitcom writer with plenty of money, a stable marriage, a platonic mistress and a flash car, has more reason than most to be happy, yet neither physiotherapy nor aromatherapy, cognitive behaviour therapy or acupuncture can cure his puzzling knee pain or his equally inexplicable midlife angst. Ugh. An Oxford English Etymological Dictionary. I've wanted a book like this for years and I was looking online for ages. Um, so I feel like this is a book that will be treasured for years and years and years by the poet in me. This big edition of Alias Grace by Margaret Atwood. Apparently this is a first American edition, I think. Yeah, first edition. Is that something that nobody else has? Stardust by Neil Gaiman. I've only read Coraline by him because it's one of my favourite movies, but I want to read some more of Neil Gaiman. The Ocean at the End of the Lane, also by Neil Gaiman. A Pyragon by Colin McCann. And I saw this one in Waterstones, and I got this. That Reminds Me by Derek Ogusu. 
and it had a quote on it from the author of The Private Joys of Nena Maloney. I'm sure it's fantastic. Another book from my Booker Longlist Predictions video, Actress by Anne Enright. Disobedience by Naomi Alderman. She won the Women's Prize in 2017 with The Power, but this was an earlier book of hers. Apparently it's about Jewish lesbians or something like that. This has always sounded interesting to me. Another Julian Barnes, Flaubert's Parrot. Some Murukami, After Dark. Not really heard anything about this one ever, but um, I've liked Murakami from what I've read of him so far. Andrew Macmillan's second collection of poetry. So his first collection, Physical, won loads of prizes, and this is his second one. Robert Lowell's Life Studies. This is the book that really launched confessional poetry into the stratosphere and inspired writers like Anne Sexton and Sylvia Plath. I'm really hoping that I'll come to love this book. Another Atwood, Hagseed. This is a retelling of The Tempest, which is probably my favourite Shakespeare play from what I've read of Shakespeare so far. This horrible mass market paperback edition of Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell. I was hoping to read this for Victober, but unfortunately that didn't happen, so maybe I'll read that before, before Christmas. The typography is actually quite nice inside. The Select by Paul Beatty. This won the Man Booker Prize a few years ago. I saw Kieran from KD Books' review of it and was like, need this book. Alan Hollingerhurst, The Spell. This is one of the books of his that I've not read yet. High hopes for this. Atonement by Ian McEwan. I read The Children Act not too long ago and adored it. So this is like his milch cow, isn't it? So this has got a lot to live up to. Some more Dickens. Ye old Curiosity Shop. Never really heard anything about this one. Some Mark Twain. When I was an undergrad doing my English literature degree, the people who did American studies, they always seemed to have some Mark Twain on them. So I feel like it is a classic that I need to read. And I found these two secondhand lovely editions of these books. So I have The Portrait of a Lady by Henry James and The Mill on the Floss by George Eliot. The Great Writers Library editions and this one is from 1986. Yeah, that is my birthday book haul. Let me know some of the books that you've bought recently. Alright, bye.